All right, today we are talking about the pros and cons of living in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And today we have Jaime on the show with us. Jaime, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, appreciate you being here. Hey guys, hey Brian, no, I appreciate you having me. Um, my name is Jaime Quintana. I'm a realtor and a builder here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, I was originally born in Texas, but my whole life I've lived in uh, New Mexico. Um, we moved um, to Cruces um, 12 years ago when I was in middle school. So I got to graduate, you know, high school and college here. So, you know, I, I call this home. Awesome. Well, yes, I I'm, I appreciate you uh, giving us the local tour kind of info about all about New Mexico and Las Cruces. So, um, yeah, let's dive into it. So the cost of living is first on our list. So we're going to talk about uh, the pros and cons of each different subject as we go through. And you guys can scroll through as you'll see the timestamps on the video. So let's hit it. Cost of living. Cost of living. So the medium sale price here is $250,000, um, which is still in terms of national, um, it's still relatively affordable. Um, what $250,000 will get you is a three bedroom, two bath, um, 1500 square foot house with you know a decent sized yard um but like like i like i've told several of my clients prices are just going up especially with you know inflation interest rates you know but in terms of national we're still pretty affordable to buy mm -hmm. in terms of rent is where we've seen a little more of a drastic in increase um in the last year i believe Rent prices have gone up on average of 36%. So you were paying, you know, six, 650 bucks a year ago, you're probably paying close to a thousand, which is the average sale um, rent price for an apartment here in uh, Las Cruces. To rent a house, it's a little more expensive. It's 1300 to $1,500 um, uh, dollars, depending on, you know, the area, number of bedrooms, baths, um, you know, how new the, the build is. So, mm -hmm. you know, it has a lot of variables, but overall in terms of in a national scale, we're still, you know, we rank right there where affordability is. Yeah. No, that's yeah. It, within the nation, that's kind of like, um, yeah, that's great in terms of affordability, um, considering the whole U S like as a whole, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's. I know. I wish it was like that um, everywhere. That'd be awesome. Um, right. Look. That's what, that's when I kind of you know I count my blessings because I'll look at rent prices in other states and tuition tuition prices in other states and you know just the overall cost of living and it's you know it's in some states it's substantial substantially substantially more than than it is here. So yep. it's um, it's definitely a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see how long it stays like that. But um, right. no. <laughs> fingers <laughs> so, crossed. Yes. Cats out of the bag. No. Um, okay. Let's go into healthcare. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So healthcare. That's probably the one thing we can we can brag about is our healthcare. We're um, we're more of a retirement city, so healthcare is you know incredibly important you know to our local population. Um, from 2008 to 2018 we saw an increase of 505, um, you know, healthcare facilities ranging from like labs, clinics, urgent cares, all that type of good stuff. So it's been a, a drastic increase within the last 14, 14, 15 years. Um, we do have two um, fully sized, fully equipped hospitals in our city, which is, you know, compared to our, our uh, population is very good. Um, we have a ton of urgent cares. There's, I feel like there's one in every, in every, uh, on every uh, street corner, there's an urgent care or urgent care over there. So in, in terms of healthcare, you, you won't have to travel far, especially, um, also because we have a ton of specialists. So that's usually what, what older folks will have trouble with. They have to go see a specialist out of state or, hmm. you know, pretty far down. And that's something we don't, um, run into quite as much here in Las Cruces relative to its size. Got it. Yeah, the healthcare, it, it seems like it's a vibrant, it's a vibrant system you guys have. Absolutely. And yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's definitely a good thing. It's, uh, 
having options of you know where you want to go to get treated is you know probably one of the one of the biggest uh, understatements and um, things that doesn't really um, bring out a lot of um, excitement but it's something that's very important to our local uh, residents yeah oh 100 yeah especially if um yeah that the older uh, community and, and so yeah. on yeah okay so let's let's get into that the the local economy um talk a little bit more about that right um so the local economy here is um you know since we were just talking about healthcare, isn't it is very robust so the local economy kind of you know encircles it um so you'll see it all of my friends uh, at least growing up are either nurses hygienists you know people in those type of industries so you'll find a lot of work um with anything in healthcare here in Las Cruces. And I would say New Mexico in, in, to, in its totality. But um, yeah, in terms of big businesses, like, you know, we don't have an Amazon warehouse or, you know, we don't have a, a, a five, Fortune 500 company here, but job opportunities are vast. If you want work, there's, um, there's a ton of options. And uh, we have a pretty good local economy um, I wouldn't say it's um, like Salt Lake City or, or anything like that, but it's definitely growing and it's picking up momentum. So if you're looking for somewhere where the cost of living is still low, the opportunities are, you know, abundant and, you know, there's universities and, you know, there's a ton of connections within the university that ha- have really helped a lot of uh, a lot of people that I know. So, yeah, in terms of um, overall local economy, I would say it's good. Um, just, I guess the cons would be that there's not major, you know, Fortune 500 companies here employing hundreds or thousands of people, but we do have, you know, military bases. So you know, if you're in the military, you could probably be stationed here. Um, we also have one not too far in El Paso. So um, there's um, a lot of opportunity. It's just finding your your niche, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So we have. Uh, from my understanding, you're saying a pretty big uh, retiree community, or like a type, which is a big part of the local economy. For uh, right, absolutely. So, you know, it's um, we were voted like the top 15 um, retirement cities in the nation. So that's right. something to be a little proud of. Um, yeah. I don't remember who did the polling, but um, um, I'll definitely look it up and I'll update you on it. Um, but yeah, in terms of retirement, um, it's, you know, everything is more geared towards um, a different aged population, but um, there, you know, there's still tons of opportunities, as I was saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like you have like the retiree, you have like this, the younger crowd with the schools or maybe, um, and then you have the military. Um, right. The, so it's like mix. three separate, you know, ecosystems yeah. in one. So yeah. it's just finding um, where, where you're comfortable at pretty much. Mm-hmm. Awesome. OK, I like that. Let's uh, let's speaking of being comfortable. Uh, the next topic we have is weather. Um, how is the weather in, in New Mexico? So the weather is um, hot. So it's, you know, year long. It's um, it's a short winter but it, it gets cold, um, but it's usually dry. So we don't see a lot of snow, a lot of um, rain or anything like that, which, you know, comes with its good things and its bad things. You know, like I was saying, it's a hot environment, but it's not humid. So it's not like um, if you go down to Florida and it's 80 degrees, but the humidity is at a hundred, you're, you're going to feel it here. It could be a cool 90 degrees. And with the, with the decent enough breeze, you, you'll, you'll be just fine. So in terms of weather, I would probably, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. we have some of the best weather. Our our sunsets are amazing. You know, it's just good overall yearly weather. It's just, I guess, more of a a preference. So if you're looking for, you know, one of the things I I always mention is um, my, my, one of my family members has um, RA, rheumatoid arthritis. And, um, anytime she's in cold weather you know she doesn't feel good you know her joints hurt stuff like that and ever since she moved here to cruces she says her health has been feeling you know better so i'm not you know i'm not completely saying it's due to her but 
you know, it for that's a thing. That is a thing. People say the same thing about Florida, like like a very similar kind of like it, the hotter environments type of thing. Right. It's it's easier to to live in an easy a nicer you know hot environment which you know you won't you don't walk outside any day of the year and you need like two two jackets or anything it's usually pretty pretty um manageable that's okay. the word what's the winter like uh for you guys the winter is um it's like i was saying it's short sure. and it it kind of depends on the year whether it's going to be really cold or not mm. um, but it usually will be very short It'll be cold for maybe like two weeks and then you know um summer will start revealing itself slowly but surely Got um it. so if you if you're not a winter person this is the best uh this is the best state and uh city you could be at what, what about rain does it rain like often or in general or rain uh, we don't we don't it's usually a, an overall dry year mm -hmm. so we'll see i think on average we get like eight inches of rain so you know it's it's not much but it's is it like thunderstorm know, kind of rain or is it just like it just rains it just kind of rains it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. the, the bad thing is you know i, I gotta be honest we usually sometimes when it rains there'll be like wind afterwards so if you just washed your car it's gonna you're gonna need to wash it again but right. you know I, I think that's overall a good thing just because if it were to rain a lot especially with the with the climate here it would probably be a bad you know humid uh hot mess but um yeah we don't get a lot of rain but we get enough i would say okay awesome all right let's move into the culture and food oh absolutely um so like i was saying i um lived here the last 12 years but you know i consider myself a native here um at this point culture here is very um very close knit, very family family orientated. Um, you know, we do have we are influenced a lot by the Hispanic culture. I'm Hispanic, so you know you'll see a lot of spicy foods, Mexican foods. So if you're into all that good stuff, it's it's definitely a place to be. We're known for our hatch green chili, which is like world renowned. It's really, hatch green yeah. chili. Okay. So, you know, any of your viewers go out there and look up Hatch Green Chili and uh, our state will come up and yeah, um, we'll, we'll throw it up right on the screen uh, for you guys to see. Check right it here. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so that's that's like a common staple here at local restaurants. So you'll go to like a local restaurant and it'll be like um, sometimes like it'll be Outback Steakhouse, but they'll offer like a Hatch Green Chili option like a hatch green chili salsa or something which is kind of neat to our area because we don't get a lot of uh you know a lot of publicity so you know whenever we can uh, represent our hatch green chili we we really do <laughs> cool is it is it like is it spicy or like on the level of spice like it's it's not known for its spiciness it's more known for its um unique like texture and like usually the size of the green chilies are bigger here because it's a funny story. I don't, I might be wrong a little bit on it, but um, when I was in New Mexico State, I had a class um, which was like a gardening class, and hatch green chilies were actually, you know, engineered at New Mexico State. So that's kind of why we're known for them because we're the only ones that kind of have like the recipe for the, for the chili. But um, it's, um, yeah, it's just a, a cool little story. But um, yeah, that's it's, um, pretty much it. It's, uh, it's a good place to eat as well. Mm, nice. Okay. And you were saying it's a smaller, small, so smaller community. So I'm assuming like a little bit slower yeah. pace. It's, absolutely. So you won't yeah. see a ton of traffic. Um, you know, I know in a lot of cities, that's a big problem now is just the traffic getting home from work. Five hour traffic is yeah. unbearable in some, some areas. I'm, I'm sure you, you can attest to that. Yes, no, I definitely can. Uh, or just even parking finding parking um, right. there's always, there's always a thing yeah but you know here there's not that the problem there uh, there's not a problem really there with parking or anything but close knit in ten, in terms of you know we our population is 130k so in terms of a city we're still pretty small local businesses work you know that's one thing i've uh, really been um um encouraged by 
is that local businesses here, small business owners are always happy to help you, happy to market your business just because, you know, they know you market my business, I'll market yours and, and the favor keeps, you know, repaying itself. So a yeah, small knit in the sense that, you know, people are nice here. I know everyone says that. But I, oh, I really, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good, that's a good, like that, that alone is people are nice here. That's cool. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, people, people here are, are decent people. Um, like I said, it's, I've said it tons of times now is a, it's a retirement city. So, you know, people come to unwind and, you know, live a peaceful, nice house, a, 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 a peaceful, nice, um, life so you know people don't really mess with each other our crime rates are, are relatively low um so yeah in terms of overall experience i i think if you're looking for a city feel you know with still all the uh, commodities of a big city like a university you know military bases um a vast uh, healthcare infrastructure then i think cruises is a, a very good place to be just for those reasons alone nice okay yeah i like that also like the low crime rate that's always a good thing right. um, <laughs> so it's always a pro always um <laughs> let's go into uh things to do okay oh, so things to do so we're more of an outside you know type city so if you like being outside you're gonna have a ton of things to do. We have a ton of trails. We have the Oregon Mountains, which is a national monument, um, has a ton ton of trails. So if you're into hiking 45 minutes to an hour, there's something for you. If you wanna spend the whole day out in the mountains, there's something to do. Um, we also have, um, you know, New Mexico State. So during um, the semesters, we Which have you're football. Representing. Yeah, you're up yeah, right? here. Yeah, right? Yes. Absolutely. Here Let's we go. Go. <laughs> go Aggies. But um, yeah, so in ter- during the school year, there's tons of football games, basketball games, volleyball games. You know, it's a very um, university town environment. Um, we're not, ve- you know, that's, that's, that's a con. This is a con. We're not very good at any of the sports I- except basketball which we're, you know, slowly but surely climbing up, climbing up the ladder. We made it to the Sweet 16, I think, this year. So that was um, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, in terms of something to do, if um, you're into sports and stuff, you can go down to the university, you know, watch a game, play, play basketball, you know, do your do your own thing. If you're more of an outdoorsy type person. There's tons of uh, hiking trails and whatnot. Um, I like to off road. Um, and Cruces is actually known for its off-road trails. So if you like four by fours and, and stuff like that, Polaris's and, uh, you know, doom buggies and all, all that good stuff, this is definitely a city for you. It's the amount of trails is just, uh, crazy. You'll see, uh, you'll see a bunch of, um, Polaris's and Can-Ams all over the city and you just know they're about to go have a good time. Oh, that's cool. And if, and if you don't like outdoor stuff or sports, then that's a con for you. Yeah, yeah uh, I, could, that, I would probably say that. But we have good internet connections, so <laughs> oh, okay. probably stay inside and, uh, you know, find something to do. Always. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Between uh, all the social media platforms, you will definitely find something to watch. You'll, uh, you'll find some time to waste for sure. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, with um, with things to do and you were mentioning can you dive a little more deeper into you said uh you said a couple things so you said like uh a national park you you said yeah we have um so we have um the dripping streams national park which is just a bunch of trails it's a protected park by the could you say the name again what it was dripping springs uh, uh national monument park nice um yeah and it's uh, you know when i was little we, that's the places we would always go on our field trips. You know, the teachers would take us and take us out on hikes and it was always a blast. So even if you have little kids and stuff, it's always cool to take them because it's not, it's not just a regular dirt path. You'll see like, you know, structures from a hundred, 150 years ago. Like there's, um, uh, there's actually, um, up this trail, the Dripping Springs trail, there's, uh, um, like, a abandoned, I, I believe it was a tuberculosis hospital that was, you know, open in the early 1900s. 
So, you know, you get to snoop around and uh, see see some of that that state, yeah, those um, national, th- th- that state history almost. Yeah. So it's um, very interesting. Also, we have White Sands. I almost forgot to mention it. White Sands is uh, our, our proud um, national monument just because just look up um, White Sands National Monument and um, it'll come up. It's the name explains it. It's a desert, a vast desert of just white sand. And it's uh, it's uh, cool to be there. It, you you know, there's a bunch of uh, uh, dirt. Um, I, I forget what it's called. Sledding. Um, oh. So you'll sled down dooms, white white dooms. So it's 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 an interesting, different experience for people that have never been. You know, being a, a native, you're kind of like, oh, white sands. But when you first see it, it's uh, it's something that it's something to see. People go like sledding, uh, just like on a sled or like on a snowboard or something. Yeah, because the dunes are are tall and and they're steep, so you'll get you'll get good speed going down them. Um, so yeah, it's it's a fun place. I've done it before, and uh, I've always had a blast. You just got to drink lots of water because that when that sun is hitting down right on that white sand, it. There's something about the color white that reflects back mm. to you. So, you know, just wear a hat, bring tons of water, and you'll have a great time. Cool. Ah, super cool. All right. Um, let's jump into the transportation and proximity to airport. So what does that look like living in Las Cruces? So the transportation here is a, a car city. So everyone has a car. It's, um, but I, I feel like, that's more of a choice because public transit is still there but it's not as widely used and um you know it's not something that we were brought up growing up using so it's kind of hard to start using it later on in life but you can definitely get around las cruces without a car um but you know it's it's nothing compared to like los angeles or, or new york or anything like that but um yeah and then in terms of proximity to airports, our closest international airport is 45 minutes away in El Paso. And you know, that that airport will take you anywhere in the world. Um, and it's a 45 minute drive, so it's not it's not too terrible, but it's still yeah. it's still a drive. Yeah. Um, so, something interesting that we do have here is um, we have like a local airport um, down on uh, Highway I-25. And, um, you know, there you could take um, flight flight uh, lessons. You can skydive. You can just go on a, oh, on, a cool. on a plane ride on a Saturday night with, you know, a date or something. So it's something that Las Cruces offers that, you know, I haven't seen too often. So it's something something to watch out for. If you're looking to skydive or do something, something crazy like that, definitely uh, stop by. Nice. Yeah, it's like a little private airport kind of a thing where they just uh... right. It's um, it's not necessarily private, but like, let's say you have a plane, you can have it stationed there. Um, but yeah, it's more of um, it's more of a like um, for people that have planes and people that are really interested in planes and people that like to skydive, it's more of that type of airport. But you know, if you if you're just looking to travel at down El Paso and they'll take care of you got it yeah (laughs) yeah to take you to wherever you need to go in the in the states or or outside cool okay yeah that's not that's not even too bad how is the airport like for in el paso like is it like crazy or is it does it function properly there's some airports that are just like lax is just it's just like a mess kind of still but um, really yeah it's 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 never it's never it's never it's always a stressful uh experience when you go to lax um because it's just, never a, a memorable good experience it's never like oh that was yeah that was great it's usually like wow that was it's just stressful i don't know why but <laughs> you don't think also because it's such a big airport that you know you see tons of people coming in and out that's like a major hub i, I, I would assume here in yeah I, well i for for instance i went to atlanta and like they have they have things more in order and they're just things just function better over there you, know, you, yeah. you can kind of tell when something is well run yeah yeah they're working on it in lax but um they're uh, when they Looks fix when they when they complete the metro in like two three years it'll um 
we'll, we'll have a reevaluation. But for now, it's <laughs> still, it's still crazy. Um, we'll have to check in. Yeah. Um, we'll play El Paso. Every time I've gone, um, I don't fly a lot, so um, I think the last time I flew was two years back. Um, but I've always enjoyed it. You know, it's you know, you still have to go through those lines where they pat you down. You know, you have to have your bag searched, all that type of stuff. But in terms of speed and you know as fast as it can be i i think we're pretty we're pretty um well off there um it is a big airport so it's not like you feel crowded in it or or anything like that there's always a, a an abundant amount of chairs sitting areas outlets you know your phone's dying there's an outlet in every, every 10 feet there i feel like there's an outlet um so yeah it, in terms of how it works i, I would probably i would recommend it cool okay Awesome. And then um, you mentioned internet is stable and good in uh, Las Cruces. So for you digital nomads or people who work online. Uh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, like I was saying, if you don't like the outsides, we we have good internet. So you'll have a good connection to your Hulu, your Netflix, your um, I know there's I wish I gamed. I used to game back when I was uh, younger, but I know for gamers, that internet connection is very important. And we do have fiber, Verizon, AT&T, and uh, someone else that um, offers it. But yeah, you, you won't have any problems there. We, we haven't improved um, dramatically in the last couple of years, just because you even feel it with your handheld devices like your phones. Um, couple years ago i'm sorry were you gonna oh no, no yeah no i, I i'm i'm agreeing with you no <laughs> you, you feel it on your devices yeah right absolutely you feel it and uh you you just kind of back a couple years like when i was in high school you'd be in certain areas of the city where your phone just didn't work and you kind of knew going in like oh i'm hitting downtown it's not gonna work or yeah. i'll call you back later we're about <laughs> to get cut off yeah um so in the last couple of years i've noticed quite a bit of um investment in the infrastructure like um, cell towers and all that stuff so i think um compared nationally 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 um we um we um average up average out pretty good great okay that's great and then let's get into the last topic which is schools um let's talk about schools so like this is more you know k through 12 type of schools yeah absolutely so there's a ton of public schools um there's i i i need to look into this but there's so many elementary schools here it's it's crazy we have we have an abundant amount of elementary schools middle schools as well we have four primary high schools which is mayfield las cruces high centennial and oñate but we recently they recently just changed the name to oregon mountains because of a um, controversial name you know which i agree with it but they spent two hundred fifty thousand dollars changing you know the signs and stuff so i'm like well it could have been a little cheaper i feel um but um no in terms of school schools we we do have a bunch of schools um we're actually even known for our um uh, our high school rivalry between mayfield and las cruces high it's a rivalry that's been going on for over 50 years and uh it's a it's a cool event that brings you know families from different types of communities different areas of the city together for one huge game which is you know um kind of uh, unique to us um we do have a university like i was saying new mexico state a good university um i went there i got my economics degree there um so yeah it's in terms of schools um it is abundant. Uh, the education is, um, from my perspective, it's it, it's what you want out of it. So you also have to, you know, put some effort in to, to kind of, you know, excel. But um, yeah, I think um, I think overall nationally, we're not ranked very uh, very good. Yeah, join the club. I, join the club, <laughs> California, California. I think we're 49th. <laughs> My, my cousin's like she's moving to texas she's a teacher she's like california's 49th brian they're almost <laughs> last I'm just like, like who's last <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i just know we're almost last yeah don't don't feel too bad brian because we're, we're not far behind you and i think we might you know it's not a stat that i like to yeah. like to research so i think we're pretty pretty far down but you know it's um 
small community with a lot of help educationally, um, you know, through sports, there's a p- bunch of programs, you know, the help is there. It's just reaching out. Um, but um, I was going to say something and I yeah, lost. That. So, so yeah. you, you went to, to uh, high, high school in New Mexico or like, in, like what was your experience life uh, for high school, junior high, kind of like teachers quality and stuff like that? It's um, I enjoyed high school. I enjoyed middle school. I thought the education was good. I think that sometimes um, from what I heard teachers tell me is that they were constrained by what they could show. Um, So, you know, let's say the class, you know, was ahead in certain subjects. They still had to spend that same amount of time on that subject, even though there's other subjects that are, you know, behind or, or not sufficient. So I feel like giving teachers more choice over their curriculum and you know you still have to have some type of um, a standard to it but just giving them you know just because they're teachers and they know how to teach so let the teachers teach which is uh something i i i really believe in um but yeah my experience overall was um was well i graduated from oñate now oregon mountains I got a scholarship to New Mexico State, even though, you know, I wasn't the best student. There's a ton, there's tons of scholarship opportunities here. Um, interesting fact, we have the most PhDs per per capita, so to say. Mm-hmm. So in terms of well-educated people being here and, um, you know, moving our economy and our uh, state government forward, we definitely have the people here. It's just feel it's more of finding innovative strategies to that actually work and that you know it's not just a constant bombardment bombardment of throwing money at the problem without actually finding the the root cause of uh you know the deficiencies yeah we, we've tried that in california it doesn't work just throwing money at the problem um <laughs> more expensive <laughs> yeah it's just it, these schools end up just being top heavy administration and the money doesn't trickle down it's just yeah there's uh that's a whole nother issue i feel like we like where it's just for the next podcast yeah i know yeah because i work at a school charter school and it's just it functions really properly but yeah there's there's that'll be another subject let us know in the comments if you guys want to talk about that for (laughs) school schools from place to place uh from different like uh in more detail from from all these different areas that we're covering so absolutely um cool is there anything else you want to kind of leave us with from uh any with new mexico las cruces um no just um you know if um you're ever in the area you you want to stop by new mexico las cruces give me a shout out uh i'm not too hard to find um you know it's um it's a good city i've always enjoyed living here um you know but it does have um it does have its uh unique things and not so unique things but um it's um overall positive experience that people are nice here um and um yeah if you're if you're interested in the area let me know yeah and what's the best way to um reach out to you is it facebook instagram phone number yeah it's uh through facebook my you can find me easily on jaime elias quintana my email is a uh, quinta c dash r at protonmail.com and uh yeah. right. phone number is 575-888-7526 so any questions or, or concerns please let me know awesome and you speak spanish right absolutely so let's go bienvenidos. yes excellent okay cool thank you again for being on the show really appreciate oh, it absolutely I, I appreciate the opportunity uh brian and you know i'm very thankful and um you were awesome and i really enjoyed the experience good awesome man Cool. All right, till next time. Likewise, brother. Thank you.